Welcome to SmokehouseStudios.net. The in-studio broadcast feed is now, is now live. Come on, back. Warning. This show is about the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are easily offended by the truth, then you need to keep listening. His return is drawing near. Smokehousestudios.net The Front Porch Show A unique blend of current events and what they might mean. Humbly seen through the eyes of God's Word, the Bible, in an old school front porch discussion with occasional guests, your input, and a guiding hand through Christ. Broadcasting from atop the front porch, it's SmokehouseStudios.net's The Front Porch Show. Now, carefully blending more smoke goodness in each and every soundbite, your host, Smokehouse. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Wherever you may be, across the globe and across the United States, old Smokehouse with you here. SmokehouseStudios.net Front Porch Show. September 22nd, 2018, and what an exciting week it has been. We're just going to get right to the point. The title of tonight's broadcast is Guile, the Plot Thickens. And what do I mean by guile? What do I mean by guile? The plot thickens. Guile, it means sly or cunning intelligence. Sly or cunning intelligence. And we're going to get to why we named the show that. But welcome aboard, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in tonight. As you know, Kavanaugh is on the hot plate. This latest scheme, yes, I'll call it a scheme, guile, sly and cunning intelligence, this guile action that has been taken against Kavanaugh to bring up a sexual allegation, something that happened during high school, hoping as a last-ditch effort to keep Kavanaugh from going and being nominated for the Supreme Court justice seat. Now, we're going to step back and we're going to take a deep look at this and, and, and why they are so adamant about not having him as a member of the Supreme Court. We know for years they have been putting all of their minions in places, the FBI, the DOJ, the Supreme Court, all of the top echelon of this world. Their people are in so they can execute the dirty deeds in order to take us down. There is a change that is happening. Now, many say that um, we're seeing judgment coming. Many are saying that we're seeing a, a revival coming. The judgment's not coming against us. It's only coming against the corrupt. But everything that they throw at Trump is like water off a duck's back. So why is Kavanaugh so sought after to totally demise and take him out of the Supreme Court. We're going to start by reminding you a few weeks ago when Lindsey Graham was questioning when Lindsey Graham was questioning the uh, hold on, I'm sorry, I apologize for that my friends. But when Lindsey Graham was questioning Kavanaugh. Let's remind you what was questioned. Listen close. He wants Kavanaugh to distinguish between He wants Kavanaugh to distinguish between treason and regular crimes. Listen close. Two buildings when the buildings fell. So when somebody says post 9/11 uh, that we've been at war and it's called the war on terrorism, do you generally agree with that concept? Uh, I do, Senator, because Congress passed the authorization for use of military force, which is still in effect. And that was passed, of course, on September 14th, 2001, three days later. Let's talk about the law and war. 
Is there a body of law called the um, law of armed conflict? There is, there is such a body, Senator. Is there a body of law that's called basic criminal law? Yes, Senator. Are there differences between those two bodies of law? Yes, Senator. From an American citizen's point of view, do your constitutional rights follow you? If you're in Paris, does the Fourth Amendment protect you as an American from your own government? Uh, from your own government, yes. Okay. So if you're in Afghanistan, do your uh, constitutional rights protect you against your own government? If you're an American in Afghanistan, yeah. you have constitutional rights as against the U.S. government. Is there a long-standing... That's, that's right. long-settled law. Isn't there also a long-settled law that <clears throat> it goes back to the Eisenstrader case? I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Johnson versus Eisenstrader. Right. That American citizens who collaborate with the enemy have considered enemy combatants. Uh, they can be. Can uh, be. They can be. They're often some. They're sometimes criminally prosecuted. Sometimes treated in the military. Well, let's talk about can be. I think the under Supreme Court precedent. Right. Swimming, yeah. There's a Supreme Court decision that said that American citizens who collaborated with Nazi saboteurs were tried by the military. Is that correct? That is correct. I think a couple of them were executed. Yeah. So if anybody doubts, there's a long-standing history in this country that your constitutional rights follow you wherever you go but you don't have a constitutional right to turn on your own government collaborate with the enemy of the nation you'll be treated differently uh what's the name of the case if you can recall uh that reaffirmed the concept that you could hold one of our own as an enemy combatant if they were engaged in terrorist activities in afghanistan are you familiar with that case yeah hamdi okay so the bottom line is, on every American citizen, know you have constitutional rights, but you do not have a constitutional right to collaborate with the enemy. There's a body of law well developed long before 9-11 that understood the difference between basic criminal law and the law of armed conflict. Do you understand those differences? I, I do understand that the, there are different bodies of law, of course, Senator. Okay. If you're confirmed, and I believe you will be, What is your hope when all of this is said and done and your time is up? How would you like to be remembered? Uh, uh, a good dad. Good judge. Uh, good husband. I think he's getting it. <laughs> okay. So Kavanaugh was basically asked, you do understand that we have two sets of rules. One, if you just simply commit a crime. The other, if you commit treason. And if you commit treason, then you lose all of your habeas corpus rights. You lose all of your rights. And he wanted Kavanaugh to acknowledge, yes, that is the case. Now, Lindsey Graham has just laid it out there. Why would he lay something like that out there if there were not people in the near future that's going to be charged with these type of treasonous crimes? Okay, so that was laid out there, and now, boom, they come out with this sexual harassment case. I wasn't there. I don't know. If this is true, give the lady her day in court. Let her show up Monday morning, which, as of right now, she says she's not going to. But if this was so demeaning to her, why wouldn't she show up Monday and testify on the behalf? Kavanaugh has the right in these United States to face his accuser. If she doesn't show up, drop the situation and let's move on and put him in the Supreme Court. But they're still hammering and hammering and hammering to keep him from that. Now we know why. Okay. Now. This week, Q has told us that Jeff Sessions has sent a letter to the Supreme Court requesting clarification about when it would be appropriate for him, meaning Jeff Sessions, to unrecuse himself in light of the president's move to declassify documents related to this Spygate, these FISA documents. The, the, the Russian narrative, all of it, to declassify it all. 
Why would Sessions send a letter to the Supreme Court? And the Supreme Court said, well, yeah, in this circumstance, yeah, you can unrecuse yourself. Because as the evidence begins to flourish, then there was obviously evidence that he he had no need to recuse himself. So if he comes back into the game now with all of this evidence that has surfaced and bubbled and came to the top, then Sessions can go in full bore and start tearing down the wicket. So why did Sessions recuse himself to begin with? Because by recusing himself, this would put his assistant attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, in power to deal with these claims of Russia, these claims of spying, and all of that. So what does Rod Rosenstein do? (laughs) Rod Rosenstein sees that Sessions has recused himself. That kind of gives Rod Rosenstein a little breathing room. And now that Rod Rosenstein is fully in charge of this, what does he do? He goes out and he hires all of the Obama administration fallouts, all of the Hillary Clinton people. He starts working dirty deeds, lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. Trump was giving these people rope after rope after rope after rope to hang themselves. And they took the bait. And now all of the actions have been done. Trump is in the process now of declassifying all of these documents that prove all of the 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 vile, wicked tactics that they have used, the guile which is sly. (laughs) That's what guile means. It means sly. These sly tactics that they have been using, these guile tactics are now going to be exposed. And whose fault is it? Who does it all point back to? It points back to now Rod Rosenstein and all involved. And now that that has been shown and is coming to the surface, now Jeff Sessions, the acting attorney, the actual attorney general now, can unrecuse himself, and there will be no bias from the media, from the left, or from anybody because Sessions recused himself. Trump's been playing the game and putting that on Twitter and all these other places. I don't have an attorney general. He's been, he's been fighting, at least on the surface, with Jeff Sessions. So when Jeff Sessions comes back, no one can utter a word on his bias, or him being biased. Sessions can come in with this evidence now and start cleaning house, which are treasonous acts. And guess what? There is a judgment coming. Now, Kavanaugh, when these treasonous acts and these treasonous people are placed in front of the Supreme Court, Kavanaugh understands that there is a difference between regular crime and treason, and he stands behind it, if it is treason, to treat them as enemy combatants. Are you getting the... the, Is it coming into focus now? Interestingly enough. Now, Hillary was was interviewed the other night on... um, What's that fellow show, that uh, nightly show? I can't think of his name right now. She says some very interesting things about the investigation of Kavanaugh. Let's listen to the first one. In a democracy, you have to have at least uh, enough trust to be able to work with each other and try to you know, solve difficult problems. And when the Republicans refuse to give a distinguished judge appointed by President Obama even the courtesy of meetings, let alone a hearing, That sent such a terrible message. Now, what they've done in this case is to hold back information. They have not provided all the information, which was always made available for other uh, nominees. And they're trying to rush this through 
uh, to the detriment of the American public who deserves to have answers to whatever uh, charges might be uh, presented. So I'm hoping that at some point there will be an agreement to have an investigation. It would be very easy for the FBI to go back and finish the background investigation to investigate these charges and, you know, maybe find out there's nothing to them, maybe find out there is something to them, but at least have that investigation completed. And I think that's what is a a fair request for due process to be uh, asked for. Okay, first of all, with due process... The lady has been given her day in court to come and testify on Monday, and she's refusing to do it. Okay, so. (laughs) Secondly, we do not live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. And third of all, what good is it going to do to have the FBI investigate this? Kavanaugh needs to be voted into the Supreme Court. So. Then it was Colbert, who she was uh, on the program with. And then she was asked a question and answered it, saying that there needs to be political trust. Well, let that sink in. (laughs) There needs to be political trust. Check this out. That, you know, in a fast moving world, we have uh, so much information coming at us and we have uh, to keep moving. But. The Merrick Garland precedent was the crassest, most cynical kinds of uh, politics that could be uh, even imagined. Okay, so you move on, a new nominee, and the Republicans won't even give up a significant percentage of the information that should be made available to the Senate to do their job. Okay, so... She's claiming there needs to be political trust and that the Republicans are not giving up what they need to for everyone else to do their job. What about all of the requests from Congress, from the FBI, from the DOJ, for all of these documents that they have been requesting that Rod Rosenstein has been holding back, that the FBI has been holding back for years, refusing to turn over any of these documents and when they do they're so heavily redacted you you can't get any information from them anyway but yet when it comes to the republicans the wicked left expect us to follow the rules you see what i'm saying the rules only apply to the republicans and not the democrats and then she goes through and says Well, this is what I would do, okay? Pay close attention to this now. They are treating this woman as though she is actually president. And when she offers her opinion, then they treat that as a presidential statement and then degrade Trump because he's not doing what Hillary would do. Check this out. So, yeah, we owe it to our constituents. We owe it to our Constitution, our process to do the job right. And they've the one, they're the ones who've turned it into a political football. And I don't have any idea what they're going to decide to do, but I, I know what I wish. Have, have a, an investigation. It won't take that long. Let- Here's what we would do. We would have an investigation. And then they just ran with that, like, oh, well, Trump's not wanting to have an investigation. And, and, and Hillary said that, that, that we need to. So they're, they're, they're always, when they have her out, treating her like a president. Now, in closing of, of this interview, it was brought up about this Russian narrative, this Russian involvement in our elections, this fake Russian narrative, because it's being proved as these documents are going to be classified. It was all a lie. It was all a lie. But listen to what she said. She said it was an act of war. But it's in this, what she said, that I want to touch on. It was an act of cyber war. You know, obviously I say nobody was killed. There aren't tanks in the street. But when you have an adversary who attacks one of your most important institutions, our electoral system, that is an act of war. And imagine if after Pearl Harbor or after 9-11 even, um, if President Roosevelt or President Bush 
had said, you know, um, we, we don't want to go into that. We don't we don't want to understand what happened. We could don't have been want a to, lot of people could have been a lot of people could have been the Chinese could have been a 400 pound guy in New Jersey. 100%. We don't know. That's right. We don't know. And we don't want to find out. Right. So yeah, let's, let's just move forward. let's just move forward. Right. Well, it's absurd when you present it like that. And unfortunately, that's what's happening. And so I I think it's imperative that Again, regardless of party or no party, people who are worried about the lack of accountability, trying to exercise checks and balances uh, with this president, have got to turn out and vote. It is our only recourse. That is what we have to do. We are actually reestablishing the true checks and balances. It's about to be unfolded before our very eyes in the coming weeks. Why do they hate Russia so bad? What is it about Russia that they hate so bad? Putin has kicked out the globalists out of Russia. The globalists no longer have any control over Russia. Research it. Putin is allowing Christianity to flourish now in Russia, which they hate. They hate God. And we're going to get into why in Hosea chapter 7 here in just a second, because we're going to take this to the Word of God. And Putin is allowing churches to be built. So Putin is taking a large stand against the globalists, and they want Russia destabilized. If they can destabilize Russia, if they can start some sort of conflict with Russia, regardless of what it is. You remember when she was running for president that she said if Russia was involved, even cyberly, that is an act of war and we will attack Russia. They want to destabilize Russia because they have lost control of Russia. They are losing control of these United States. There is panic in D.C. And they are grasping at straws now on this Kavanaugh hearing to try at least block that and see what their next move is going to be. There's a reason for all this. We're going to get into the Word of God. Why? Why? Okay, one more clip that I want to play. Q has told us this week. Now, we know weeks ago when Lisa Page was brought in, you know, Struck and Page, after Struck's hearing in front of Congress where he just lied, 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 and it's starting to come out now in these new texts that, yes, they did put out these bogus articles in order to remove a sitting president against the will of the people. Yes, they were conspiring to remove Trump out of office against the will of the American people. A duly elected president, this coup that everyone said was a conspiracy theory is now coming out to be true. Coming out to be true. Now, the rumor has it that these people are being told you can either tell all you know And we will give you immunity. Or if you fight us, you will be charged with treason and you will go to get Mo as an enemy combatant. And a lot of people that are being brought in for questioning, Lisa Page being one of them, is singing like a bird and telling all. Also, we have Q telling us that now Loretta Lynch is singing like a bird. And as of just a few days ago, James Baker, yes, even James Baker now is squealing like a bird. And it's interesting. Laura Ingram, check out this interview from Laura Ingram just Ingram just a few days ago on this James Baker. This is this is they call Trump a, an autocrat. This is this is been, maddening. As I've been saying for two years, there was a brazen plot to illegally exonerate Hillary Clinton in the email case, and then if she lost, to frame Donald Trump. And that is exactly what these texts are about. Whether or not Mr. Strzok and Lisa Page and others are indicted is certainly a question people can debate. But let me just say, I know that there is a grand jury underway. Uh, testimony is being taken about Strzok. Page, McCabe, and others involved in this case. And the reason we know it is that James Baker, the former general counsel of the FBI, has turned state's evidence and is fully cooperating with the inspector general and with the federal grand jury. I can assure you 
Mr. Comey has been very silent in recent weeks, and the reason is very simple. He knows he's going to be indicted. Wow, pretty explosive on a Friday night. Okay, so now James Baker is talking. So I guess as we watch the coming days unravel, start watching for Comey to be indicted. All of this is coming out. These, you know, even though Trump declassified this, these documents, it's going to take a little bit before they are are, are cycled out, where we can see it all. But we can see, we can see it beginning to happen. I know Q's been telling us this for a long time, but there has got to be patience. What does the Word of God say about evil, about wicked? What does he say about these things? Numbers 32, 23. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. He tells us in Job 20, verse 7, that the heavens will reveal his iniquity, and the earth will rise up against him. Proverbs 26, verse 26 says, Though his hatred covers itself with guile, there's that word, though his hatred covers himself with guile, and guile means those sly tactics that they try to do. What are they doing with Kavanaugh? Sly tactics. These sly tactics. Though his, let's, let's read it as it's translated. In Proverbs twenty six twenty six, though his hatred covers itself with these sly tactics, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. What assembly is he talking about here? Well, the assembly could be anything. It could be the assembly of the court. It could be the assembly of the church. But though their hatred covers itself with guile, with these sly tactics, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. What are we seeing happening now before the assembly? It's being revealed, their wickedness. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. For God will bring every act to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. And Luke 12, verse 2. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. We'll take a look at one more. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. Therefore, do not go on passing judgment before the time. What have we been doing? All of this the Q has been telling us, all that we are slowly seeing unravel we're like look man you got the evidence let's go after these people but god tells us therefore do not go on passing judgment before the time but wait until the lord comes who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's hearts And then each man's praise will come to him from God. So we have to wait. We have to wait upon the Lord. This is why these things are gradually now coming out. God has told us just in these mere verses that nothing hidden will stay hidden. They're... they're, they're, Sly tactics, their their guile, the wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. This is the word of God. This is not Q here, man. This is God telling us this. There is several more verses we're going to take a look at throughout the show. But this is going to set the stage now of what we are going to discuss when we come back in Hosea chapter 7. We know Hosea 4 tells us about the dead animals and that we are destroyed due to lack of knowledge. We know that Hosea 5 shows exactly what Israel was doing that we're doing today is whoredom, the sin of whoredom. 
We're going to look at verse 7 when we come back, or chapter 7 when we come back. And listen very closely to what God says in chapter 7, because we are seeing it on our television screens today. There is a God, and He is alive, and this Word is a living, breathing Word. Repent, give your life back to Jesus Christ. What's going to be the October surprise this year? We'll be right back right after this. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252 252- 380 followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net. God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. what the Holy Spirit said. He said, I have many ministers and they are speaking on my behalf. But he said, what's missing is the urgency of their voice. These mega churches are really cognizant not to offend people. And they're really careful when they get up and preach to people that everybody leaves out there feeling really good. Preachers refuse to preach on the coming of Jesus Christ. Where's the urgency? I have never seen America in the place where we are right now. If you think that all the persecution is going to remain in Iraq against the Christians, you better think again. It's already coming into this country right now. If we don't tell people what they need to hear, God's going to hold us accountable and their blood will be on our hands. Whenever we preach, we've got to preach with an urgency in our voice that we need to be right with God if anything should happen to us. There's things right now in motion that may change our nation almost overnight. And for me to stand here and act like everything's all right, I can't do that. The politicians in Washington may can do that and lead you to believe that everything's going to be okay. But in the house of God, there's got to arise a siren that says, blast, 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 attention, attention, attention. Things are changing and they're changing quickly. We've got to have preachers in the pulpit that will say, watch out, warning, warning, red light, warning. People know something's going on in the Middle East. They know something's going on in Iraq, in Iran, in Damascus. They know about Iran. And people that's not even scripturally literate are trying to answer these things and they're missing in a million miles. And God's saying to the preachers, get up and tell them. It's time to talk about what God's doing. People are seeking the Lord. People are seeking Christ. And if they don't find him in the church, where are they going to find him? I have a question. Where? an urgency folks 1 Corinthians 4 5 therefore do not go on passing judgment before the time but wait until the Lord comes who will bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's hearts and then each man's praise will come from God are we seeing a healing coming to America or are we seeing America's all out judgment I don't know. You have to go to the Lord, and you have to seek counsel in that. We're just giving you what's happening week by week. You must form that relationship with God. These churches, when the exposure comes out of what's been going on in these churches, we're going to get into in a moment. You're going to understand what all of this means. You have to seek the Lord. We don't. We can't give you the answer to the future other than you seeking it yourself from the Lord. So in Hosea chapter 7, God says through the mouth of Hosea, whenever I would restore the fortunes of my people, 
Whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. Let's read that again. Listen very close. Whenever I would restore the fortunes of my people, whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. So if we put that in terms of today, whenever God decides to heal and restore to his people of today in America, whenever he, if he wants to heal Israel, then the sins of this nation are going to be exposed and the crimes of this nation are going to be exposed. This is the word of God. This is the word of God, friends. Next verse. They practice deceit. Thieves break into houses. Bandits rob in the streets. But they do not realize that I remember all of their evil deeds. Their sins engulf them, and they are always before me. They delight the king with their wickedness, the princess with their lies. They are all adulterers, burning like an oven whose fire the baker need not stir from the kneading of the dough till it rises. Does that not sound like the corrupt administration that we are battling right now? All of these things fit. Verse 5, on the day of the festival of our king, the princesses become inflamed with wine, and he joins hands with the mockers. What, what's the Democrats play? What is the, the, the criminal elite? What do they do? They mock. They call us names. They call us Islamophobic, gayophobic. They call us all these phobic things. They join hands, and their followers join hands, and they mock, and they ridicule. They Okay, when... when, when how many memes have we seen on Facebook when, when they say you try to literally sit and do debate facts with these people and they can't do it? All they do is come at you with the same phrase. You're a racist. You're an Islamophobic. They mock. They make fun. They cannot debate fact with fact. And now you're understanding why it's being told to you from the word of God. Their hearts are like an oven. They approach him with intrigue. Their passions smolder all night. In the morning, it blazes like a flaming fire. Are all of them, all of them are hot as an oven. <coughs> they devour their rulers and their kings fall. And none of them calls unto me. Meaning, look at what's happening. What do we always say? The rats are leaving the nest. The rats are eating each other. Okay? That's exactly what this is saying. Their kings are falling, but they're not reaching out to God. What are they doing? They're doing exactly what was told to us in Proverbs 22.6. Though his hatred covers itself with guile, these sly tactics... Guile means sly tactics. Though his hatred covers itself with these tactics, these sly tactics, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. They do not reach out to God here, friends. They are reverting back to the same old playbook. They are reverting back to their guile, to their sly tactics. They're not reaching out to God. Again, all of them are hot as an oven. They devour their rulers, meaning they eat themselves. All of their kings fall. Look at all of these high, important people in our criminal elite that are being brought to justice. They're falling. And none of them call on me. None of them are calling to God. They're resorting back to Baal, Baal tactics, their guile, tactics. Ephraim mixes with nations. Ephraim is a flat cake not turned over. What are we here in America? We are Ephraim. We are flat, man. We're being burned from underneath. We're not flipping it over. 
We're, our churches are sitting back dead or to hammer. They're afraid to speak the truth. They leave us in that skillet to be burned. If the church was alive today, they should be flipping that cake over and over and over and over and cooking it complete. But they're letting you burn because they refuse to believe and or, uh, speak the truth. And why is that? Because guess what else is coming out? In all of this information, all of this 501c3, you know, these this tax-exempt status for the churches, it's coming out. You can see it. And it's coming out in ways that you better be paying attention when this information starts coming out in the mainstream. The truth behind the 501c3 of what it was actually designed to do, it was designed for what is ever spoken out against this societal change, whether it be homosexuality, whether it be this sexual immorality that's happening, whether it be uh, the what God told us would happen to us if we abuse the poor, uh, the teachings in the Bible about how prayer works, all of these teachings that God has given us the tools for in His living Word, the 501c3 has basically broken all of these topics down into a, a way to where as they want to implement something in society, they go to the church in America and say, now, under the 501c3, since you are governed now under us, We don't want you preaching about this. And if you do, then you're going to lose your tax-exempt status, and we're going to shut you down. So what does the church do? They lean on that Hebrews scripture that says you must obey the government. You must do what your government says to do. And so they teach that to their people. This is what God told us to do, so if the government tells us we can't preach this out of the Word of God, we can't do it. And they won't preach it. And then as it progresses, the government will come up with another topic that they don't want the church to preach out against. And they come to the church, and they say, okay, don't preach out against this. Because if you do, since you're, we're, you know, you're, you're governed by us, and if you preach out against this now... We're going to shut you down. And the church cowers and bows their head, and they submit to a man. They submit to man's law, and they reject the law of God, and that is what they are teaching you. And they are denying you of the truth of the Word of God. It makes you weak. It makes you the prey. And if you do not follow the Word of God, If you do not stand on the Word of God, Jude told us in his chapter to, he says, man, I was just going to come to you and just basically give you a summary of what all you need to do before we dive into Revelations. But man, something has grabbed a hold of me that tells me, man, in these days, you better contend for the true faith in Jesus Christ. Because there's going to be these slick-haired people that's going to slip in unaware that has been there since the beginning of time, and they're going to lead you astray. They're going to be clouds without rain. They're going to be empty. They're not going to do anything for you. And this is exactly what is about to bubble to the surface now, is the, these clouds, these churches that have no rain in them, are going to be exposed to their practitioners, and it's going to cause an upheaval in the church. Brother Mark Taylor has talked about this several times, and this week he has really brought it to our attention to the forefront. Trump has told us in his inauguration speech that Christians will once again have a voice in this nation, and this is why the wicked are going nuts. So there you have it. Ephraim mixes with the nations, and Ephraim is a flat cake not turned over. And the church has committed adultery. 
against Jesus Christ because they are rejecting the teachings of Christ and they are bowing to a man-made government. Well, Greg, it does say that in Hebrews that you must obey the laws of the land. Okay, that is true. Our laws of this land is the United States Constitution. That we adhere to. If anything outside of that conflicts with the Word of God, Peter told us, you follow God's law. Follow God's law. Daniel, he did not obey the law of the land when they said no one could pray. (laughs) Daniel just kept on praying three times a day like he always does. And what happened? He was sentenced to be thrown into a lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were told to bow before a man. Bow to a man. Bow to a government. Bow to a kingdom. And they said they only bow to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They were sentenced to go and be thrown into a fiery furnace. This weak need church that is leading your practitioners around, uh, leading your practitioners astray. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a phrase for you. Remember Shiloh. Remember Shiloh. Secondly, you're going to be held accountable because you are the spiritual leaders, and you are going to meet a fiery end that above even the corrupt wicked, because you refused to lead your people down the path of truth. Yeah, but but if we go against the government, then our modern-day lion's den will come to us, or our modern-day, you know, our, our church and our building will be thrown into a fiery furnace. Good. Let it. Because if you have the name of Christ out on your marquee, if you stand and claim to stand on the Word of God, then you know if you do not follow man's law in when it's against the law of God, yeah, your church is going to be thrown into a fire furnace, and your church will be thrown into the lion's den. God is not going to deliver you from that. But we know from Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and others, they weren't delivered from it. But God delivered them while they were in it. And we're standing at the peak of a cliff, the peak of a mountain, standing at the bluff, church, And you're either going to follow the laws of God or you're going to follow the laws of man. And if you follow the laws of man, you're going to be pushed off the edge of that cliff. We're all going to be pushed off the edge of that cliff. We are. But if you you let man dictate to you what you're going to preach out of the Word of God... Those mighty wings of eagles that have been promised to us, they're not going to come, and you will fall into the ever-burning pit. Because not, we're not going to be delivered from being thrown over this cliff. But those who follow the true Word of God and are not afraid to preach it, at whatever cost, we're going to be delivered while we're falling. That I can promise you, because it's in the Word. It is in the Word. Thank you, Aunt Jackie. It's in the Word. But listen to hear what it says. Foreigners slap his strength. Excuse me. Foreigners sap his strength. But he does not realize it. What's happening to us? Foreigners are coming in, and they are, they are robbing us of our strength because we are not allowed to stand up and be Americans today because the foreigners have come in, and they have sapped up our strength. We now have to bow to the foreigners. 
We cannot fly our flag now because it offends somebody. We cannot have the statues of our past warriors because it offends somebody. And foreigners have come in and they have sapped our strength. And Hosea goes on to say, His hair is sprinkled with gray, but he does not notice. (laughs) Foreigners sap our strength, but we don't realize it. And our hair is sprinkled with gray, but we do not notice it. Friends, the church is growing old. What is being told to us here is that the church is growing old. We're growing weak. I'm not trying to offend the elderly here, but in a heart-to-heart discussion, elderly people know exactly what this means. I, at 45, 46 years old, can definitely not do things that I could do when I was 20. And I can only imagine how it's going to be when I'm 66. My point is, (laughs) the church is growing old. The church's body is dwindling, but we don't recognize it. We think just because we go in there and have a hoity-toity service and the preacher preached a good sermon and nobody came in and shot up our service, that God must have us anointed that everything is okay, and that is not the case because our hair is going gray and we do not realize it. Israel's arrogance testifies against him, but despite all this, he does not return to the Lord his God or search for him. What's America's arrogance? Oh, well, we've got Trump. we got Q. It's all coming out in the wash. It's all going to be dealt with. Look at our mighty army. Hey, we've got the National Guard on our border. We're arrogant. Because we are not humbling ourselves and coming to God as a child. No, we're arrogant. We don't need God. we got robots now. We can clone DNA. We can make organs now in animals And now the human body can just go to the repair shop like you take your car. You need a new motor. You need a new lung. They can grow one in an animal. Boom, there you go. We're arrogant. The church is arrogant. When when prophets are sent to these leaders in the church and, and they're told, I need to say something to the congregation, and the church tells them, well, this is not the direction that we choose to take the congregation at this time. You are arrogant. You're not listening to the voice of God. And you better repent for that. Because when this all gets uncovered, God tells us in, in Job ten fourteen, if I sin, then you would take note of me and would not acquit me of my guilt. Job fourteen six says, For now you number my steps, you do not observe my sin. The church is overlooking its sin. Jeremiah two twenty two. Although you wash yourself with lye and you use soap, The stain of your iniquity is before me, declares the Lord God. You you stand up in your flashy churches with your PowerPoints hanging from the ceiling, and you think you're preaching the true word of God in the days that we live ourselves in. So you're, you know, you're washing all this sin. You know, you say your little cliche prayer. Oh, God, forgive me of my sins. God, guard and direct us. We've heard that prayer every Sunday. You'll hear it tomorrow. You think you're washing yourself with light. And you use much soap. But it does no good because the stain of your iniquity is before God. The stain of the fact that you are bowing to man and you are not humbling yourself and, and, and bowing to God, these stains of this iniquity is before God. You can't hide it, man. It can't be done. So Hosea 7 goes on to say, Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless 
now calling to Egypt. Oh my God, they're calling to Egypt. Now turning to Assyria. And when they, okay, let's just stop there. Okay, so Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless, now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. What does that mean? What was going on in Assyria? What was going on in Egypt? They had all these false gods. What was the plagues about in Egypt? To prove that the gods that they served, Baal, was not a god. (laughs) So when these things happen, when these things start surfacing, what do these churches do? Man, the, these churches, they know what the last day signs are. And, and you can turn on the TV or just look out your window and you can see them happening over and over. But they're not turning to God. They're reaching out to the gods of Assyria. They're reaching out to the gods of Egypt. They are reaching out to the government and saying, Yes, Master, we'll do what you say, even though we see the the signs happening and in, in, in the world burning down, and this is what God told us to tell the people. But yes, we'll, we'll reach out because what is the world? Who is these corrupt criminal elite following? They're following the satanic cult. They are following Baal. They are worshiping Baal. How many times have I told you everything that we see is the sun mascot, whether it be Walmart, whether it be uh, the sexual perversions that we see in our music, they always either have triangles of the sun in the background or sun crowns on their head, man. It is the same God that they served back then, that they are serving now. And this is the same message that we need to adhere to today that happened in Israel. They saw all of this stuff happen, but they reached out to the gods in these other nations and not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is where we are today. The church is weak. The church is powerless. But you, the individual, that see this for what it is, you're the strength. You're the remnant. You're the ones that are going to be turning this around. You are going to be standing an oak when the flames come through the fields. So what did God tell us? When they go... I will throw my net over them, and I will pull them down like birds of the air. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. Woe to them, because they have strayed from me. This corruption that is being unveiled is not just for these criminal elite. The the unveiling is going to be happening in the church. This 501c3 is going to be part of this uncovering, this revelation. And not only does this apply for the criminal elite, this is going to apply to you, the Christian, if you are following the churches associated with the 501c3 that are preaching what the government wants preached instead of what... God wants preached in these days. You are going to be no different than these criminal elite when God throws his net. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. Woe to them because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. What is it? Wait a minute. We, we can understand why the criminal elite and how the criminal elite are rebelling against God, but how are we, the Christian, rebelling against God? Because we refuse to preach the truth and we follow the ways of man and we preach only what man tells us that we can preach. That is how we have strayed from God. Destruction to them because they have rebelled against me. I long to redeem them, but they speak lies against me. They do not cry out to me from their hearts. They speak lies. Lies. We can't preach that because God says we have to obey the government. Yes, we do have to obey the government. But we see story after story after story that there comes a time when you've got to follow what God's laws are when the government turns against God. And we're not doing that. 
of all times in society to truly be preaching the truth of the Word of God is today, and the church is not doing it. I am sending a warning to the churches in America today. You repent for it. You are still in the time of mercy. In the morning, start anew. Start slamming the pulpit, slinging the Bible, slinging the songbooks, and telling the people the truth of what is going on today, or you're going to be destroyed. Destruction is coming. God has promised it because they do not cry out for God from their hearts. They gather together for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. <laughs> they, they come into church and, and, and they worship. Oh, yeah, they come and get their new wine. They come and get their prayer. They sing a few songs. But we don't even offer an altar call anymore. A lot of the churches that I go to now, man, it used to be when I was a kid, it was conviction. It was it was sermons of conviction, buddy. It was hardcore. I can remember being 10, 11, 12 years old, scared to death to walk out those doors when church was over. And after that type of sermon was over, the preacher says, you better come up here right now and repent. You better, you better, you better tell all of your sins to God and repent before you leave this service. We don't hear that no more. We don't even hear conviction. Now, at the close of the sermon, after we hear the fluffy puffy, oh, God loves you. Pay no attention to what's going on in the world today because the government said we can't talk about it. At the closing of the sermon, they just say, if there's anything we can do for you, won't you come on up as we stand and sing? Got news for you. You cannot do a thing for anyone in that congregation. And you haven't done anything for the people in that congregation the whole service because you have denied them the truth because you refuse to speak it because you are bowing to Baal. You are bowing to a Baal system. You are bowing to the God of this world, which is Satan. And you're rejecting God. Hey, I'm just the messenger. I'm reading it right here in the Bible, friends. I trained them and strengthened them. Listen, <laughs> us as kids, man, back us. He's talking to us right now, us as children, that we're hearing these words of truth and hearing the call for true repentance, the conviction in every service. He's calling. He is speaking to us right now. He says that I trained you and I strengthened you but they plot evil against me. Well, I see what you're saying, Greg. I, I go to one of these fluffy, puffy churches, and I'm kind of fluffy, puffy myself, but, man, I haven't uh, come against God in any way. I haven't plotted against Him. Really? Bible said season the waves are going to be roaring. How many hurricanes have we got? we got the Atlantic roaring. We have got the Pacific roaring. We've got that nasty storm that just came over. Um, we got that nasty storm that just came in over uh, Europe. The waves are just roaring all over the world. we got dead animals dying everywhere. We've got famine. We've got drought. We've got earthquakes. Oh, but I'm not going to go tell people that we're living in the last days. They'll think I'm crazy. Well, guess what? You're plotting against God. You are plotting against the Word of God. They do not turn to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of their insolent words. For this, they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. So these gods that you're looking to right now, this God of Baal, this God of this world, I, of course I'm speaking about the criminal elite, but I am also speaking about the dead church in America today. Because if you are bowing to the God of this world and you're allowing the God of this world to dictate to you the words of the God Almighty that we are supposed to speak, Friends, that's on you. 
you're going to be ridiculed. The gods that you have actually been serving, I don't know if you're aware of this, but it's about to be revealed. And when it does, God has told us that we're going to go down with them just like they are. That's why tonight we need to humble ourselves, and we need to turn from our wicked ways, and we need to repent and call upon the name of Jesus. Friends, when we get back, we're going to be talking about all of this censorship that's happening. I, I, I led into all of this. I have a special guest that's going to join us here. I'm just going to play a real quick break because she's uh, got limited time, okay? But this is what I'm talking about. This all leads into what we are seeing. And censorship is the biggest part because the church is dead in a hammer and they're not standing up against this. They are bowing to the God of Satan. They're bowing to the God of this world. And they're like, well, okay, if, if you don't want us to say that, we just won't say it. When is enough enough? When, you, when are you going to humble yourself and call upon the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and said, I am done with this world and I will speak the truth at whatever cost? That question is going to be yours. And we'll discuss this when we come back. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net. God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. Good evening and welcome to the Christian Truckers Network. This is a ministry that welcomes guest speakers to share their testimonies as well as the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads. If you would like to be a participant, you can call in at 641 715 Three five eight zero. Then they'll ask for an access code, and that is four zero one zero eight zero. Then the pound sign. Again, that number is six four one seven one five three five eight zero. Access code four zero one zero eight zero. Pound sign. Okay, we have all endured trials and tribulations in our life. I, I'm, <laughs> I am no different than anyone else. And uh, this young lady that I have on the program with us tonight, um, you know, she's endured trials and tribulations, and, and uh, we had her on a while back, how she's being uh, disgraced by actual family members for her faith. And see, friends, this is what's coming upon us. And you're either going to... Why did God tell us to build our house upon a rock and not on the sand? This is the sand that he was talking about. When the storm comes, friends, the storm is here. And those of you that have built your house upon the sand, your house is going to crumble. That's why we're urging you to get your house back upon the rock. We have Sister Stacy on the program with us tonight. Hello, Sister Stacy, and welcome to the Front Porch Show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing fine. And, Sister, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you said you had limited time, so I wanted to get to you as quick as I could. Tell us what is going on with you. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it just seems like it's just uh, getting worse and worse by the day. <laughs> um, yeah, you said you had me on a while back. I was dealing with some issues with uh, my brother-in-law, um, and he has since uh, completely ended our relationship, a 25-year relationship, um, because he can't apparently handle who I am as a person, even though I have never tried to push any of my beliefs on him, because I know where he stands. So that's, that's unfortunate. Then I've got, you know, my mother-in-law now that has um, come against me. So I'm pretty much the black sheep of the family right now, especially on my husband's side. Wow. Um, <laughs> and now... 
Um, I have had my YouTube um, page up since 2011. I started it in 2011. It was uh, under the name Star Behind Closed Door. And I really got on there just to uh, start talking about what I was seeing that was going on in the world because I feel like that was a time where a lot of people were kind of waking up and Jesus was calling to people. And so I just started getting on there, sharing testimonies and sharing what was going on in my own life and the world around us. And and uh, so I've been doing that since 2011. I had around 30, I think 36,000 followers that I've accumulated over the years. Some of you know them I've had some real relationships. I want to say maybe... Maybe we met that way, or did we meet through some other forum? I can't remember. Well, what had happened was um, you had posted something on your uh, YouTube page, and and I was wanting to get in touch with you about it, and then all of a sudden I heard you on Bagley's program. And at the time, Bagley and I were, uh, uh, because Tanya was building my website and building his at the same time, so we all three would uh, roundtable on the phone a lot uh, outside of his show. And so uh, when I heard you on his program, I, I called his, right. I, was, I called him. I was like, "Dude, man, get me in touch with this girl." <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I really I've met some really amazing people and built up some some great relationships. And a lot of people have, um, you know, given their life to Christ because of that ministry. And it's not because I know everything. It's just sharing personal testimonies. Um, and so. I want to say about a year ago, I actually monetized a few of my videos, which I had never done before. Um, and that was go- that went well for a little while, but then I got a notice about, I want to say four or five months ago, I posted a, a video titled, um, had the word rapture in it. And I immediately got a, a notification from Google that said they were demonetizing my station or channel, which doesn't really bother me because I didn't get into that to make money in the first place. Um, and I knew what they were trying to do. They were trying to censor me and shut me up. And I said, well, that's not going to stop me, you know? Um, so I continued to put out videos and then, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of the, the way the events went. I, I went on yesterday so I've been working on this new forum on Patreon. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's where artists can go and, you know, just have their own station and, and put out great content. And I thought, you know, I want to get away from using the Google and the YouTube and Facebook and all of that because it's all corrupt. Well, and let, so me, had- let me add to this. A lot of people are moving to pa- Patreon uh, for the simple fact that they are allowed to speak freely in their mind. But now... <laughs> From what you're oh, no. saying, now Patreon <laughs> is coming under attack. Well, we'll have to see uh, what happens with that. But I want to tell you what's real weird about this is that I had just put my Patreon page together. I had just finished it. I was, I uploaded or I filmed a video. I was going to put it on my page saying, hey, you know, if you guys want to come follow me here, we can be more in community there and and you know, without having to be censored and all, all of that. I mean, I'm talking within an hour of me finishing my Patreon page, of me finishing the video. I go to upload from my phone, and it says you cannot do it. kept getting an error message. So I noticed I had been logged out of my account, and I thought, well, that's weird. So I got home, got on my computer, tried to go on. Then I noticed I have a message from them in my email that says your page has been permanently suspended. Now, I want to back up here, let you know that I was in good standing for seven years. I never once had a copyright strike. I never once had any negative marks whatsoever. So they're not basing this on uh, me having repeated strikes or repeated, you know, flags. So I sent them the appeal message back to them and said, look, tell me which videos I need to take down. I need someone to tell me exactly what I need to do. I'll take down all of them and start from scratch if you want me to. And then I got, a, you know, a generic message back about an hour later saying, we've decided that it's better if we just keep your, your page suspended. 
So I have no way to get a hold of any of my followers and let them know any of this has happened or gone on. Um, just like that, everything's wiped out, gone. And they said, and you're not allowed to make a new page. Wow. Well, you know, Stacy, here's the deal. And uh, I know that you're at an event tonight and was unable to hear the first part of my show. But you just said the most valuable thing right there. You're not able. You had all these volley of followers, and you're not able to uh, tell them why this has happened. You're not able to uh, get in touch with any of them. All they know is they go to your page, and boom, you're gone. And yeah. it's either in their mind that you just got tired of doing what you're doing and gave up, or with all the censorship that is going on, uh, they're thinking, oh, well, she must have been lying or saying something <laughs> wrong, and they got rid of her. Because, see, that's the narrative that's being placed in everybody's mind, is that we're conspiracy theorists, we're lying, and they need to be censored and silenced. And you have half of the population that is all for this. I mean— uh, you know, they seek out, the Bible says they see, they have itching ears and they seek these teachers that will tickle their ears, you know, and yeah, these, the, the, the government and the elite are saying, look, we, we, we got it going on. These people don't. So we're going to go ahead and go against the constitution. We're going to silence these people. And it is happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's happening in real it, life. <clears throat> It is. And I, I honestly, I mean, even though I was shocked, I wasn't. It was like I'm, I'm shocked, and then I'm not shocked at the same time. But I think the most shocking part for me was the time frame. You know, I don't believe in coincidences, and I don't believe that that was an accident, that they knew that I was getting ready to tell those people to follow me somewhere else. Because the timing was just, I mean, I'm not kidding you, within an hour, I mean, what are the chances of that happening? Um, I think they, you know, they watch you, they censor you. It's, it's not a joke that they're watching and listening to everything that we're saying. So um, they knew, I think, darn well what they were doing. Um, and I will tell you, I live here in California. I'm not afraid to go and knock on Google's door. <laughs> I only live about 30 minutes. I actually have a friend that works for Google that can get me in the door. And um, so I'm not, that's not out of the question for me to go down there. I mean, it's not that, you know, pressing of an issue, but again, it is because it, they're, take, they're, they're taking our free speech away. Yes, they are. <laughs> you know, Trump is already addressing this, and he says there's going to be something done about it. Uh, we were going over some uh, scripture uh, during the broadcast about these things that uh, God has told us, and he tells us to be patient that he's going to mm-hmm. bring everything out into the light, but it's going to be done under his time frame. It's not going to be done under ours. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the Scripture says, Therefore, it's 1 Corinthians 4, 5, Therefore, do not go passing judgment before the time, but wait until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the things hidden in the darkness and disclose the motives of men's hearts, and then each man's praise will come to him from God. And so here's the situation, sister, and to all of our listeners. Yes, it is time to stand up and speak the word of God. Yes, this censorship is happening. And yes, this is our modern day being thrown into the lion's den. And what Sister mm-hmm. Stacy is saying is, by her saying, I'm not afraid to march into Google, she's saying, <laughs> I'm not afraid to go into the lion's den because I know that God is going to shut their mouths while I'm in there. I'm not afraid mm-hmm. to walk into the fiery furnace because I know that I will be delivered while I am in it. And this was the message I've been preaching all, uh, all the show. So getting back to this censorship. Because I've been censored. I mean, all of us have been censored. It's happening. Uh, do you uh, follow Alex Jones? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I did. I can't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I you know I, I follow him from time to time, and and say what you will about him, people. I mean, you know, if you think he's crazy, who cares? The point is, he's right. a, he's an American. He has an opinion, and he has sources, and he is being silenced. And he, like he says, is the tip of the spear. And if they can do it 
against him and get away with it, everybody else is going to be next. And now it's trickling down to us and to Sister Stacy. So, yes, yeah, that's absolutely. And, and you know what's interesting about that is, is exactly say what you will about him. He's a little radical, um, but that's really not the point. Um, but he did say, and he's been saying for you know the last couple of years that censorship was coming. And so this is just another, uh, you know, another proof that what he's been saying all along is happening. And um, yeah, we we just. You know, for years, we, what have we all been saying? You know, that time time is, is short, and we've been warning of that. And I think this is for one of those reasons, is that time is short, not just in the return of Christ, but in the time where we're going to be able to actually reach people with the gospel, because that's happening right now. Yep. The Bible says that there will be a famine in the land, not for bread or water, yep. but for the Word of God. And you hit the right. nail on the head. This <clears throat> this is the beginning stages of the famine of the Word of God. And it's happening, and nobody seems to be doing anything about it. The church is not speaking out against it. Why? Because under the 501c3, they're not allowed to. <laughs> and they right. are trading in that 501c3, the modern-day 30 pieces of silver, committing adultery against Jesus Christ, and they are bowing to the God of this world. Mm. And so, what are you going to do? I'm not talking to you, Sister Stacy. I'm talking about <laughs> to the listeners. What, what are you going to do now? I, you know, uh, you're probably thinking, well, I don't know what to do. What did God say in His Word that we just read? Humble yourselves. Return back to me. And then he will guide our steps. He will heal our land. But we have to do these things. And this is what I am doing. And this is what Sister Stacy is doing. So what are some of the uh, forward plans that you have been looking at to kind of counteract this? Well, it just happened yesterday. <laughs> so I'm still gathering my thoughts. But um, I'm not going to give up in trying to reach them. And I want, if nothing else, I want an explanation of what it was that I did that w that went against their rules. Because I've read every fine print, and from what I see, I haven't broken any of the rules. So legally, you know, there may be some legality steps that I can take there. I don't know. Um, so that's just kind of where I'm at thinking, you know, the first steps. But I definitely <laughs> am thinking about going down there. And being like, who can I talk to? Is there anyone here that can at least give me an answer? Because right now I'm not getting any answers. I'm getting generic emails. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. But, it, you know, the immediate step right now is I'm going to go forward with the Patreon. It's just unfortunate because I have no way of letting people know that's where I'm at. And that's, that's the part I think that's the most sad to me is that, you know, I'm sure there are people that are going, wait a minute. <laughs> where did she go? You know, well, you can tell the world, go ahead and tell them what your YouTube channel was like you did at the beginning and then tell them where you're going. OK, well, my my YouTube channel was star behind closed door, um, but I am now on Patreon under Jesus Cafe Radio. So they can find me. I think if you just type in Jesus Cafe Radio in the Patreon search, you should be able to find me there. All right. Well, I tell you, we got some bulldog listeners, and I mean that in a good way. Uh, <laughs> I can think of uh, twenty or thirty just off the top of my head that's going to share, share, share that information. And when they, when I say share, Stacy, I don't mean they're going to send it to a friend or two. <laughs> 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 I mean they're going to put it in a vat and pour it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so. Well, I appreciate that, and I would, I would just tell people, you know. Um, you know, my main focus of that page right now is really helping people to build an intimate conversation, conversational relationship with Jesus, because that's really the only thing that's going to get us out of all of this right now. So that's, you know, we're going to have a lot of content coming in there. Um, I, I really envision it to be a beautiful community of, of believers that come together for support and prayer and content. And so I, I hope to see you know, all of you there. That would be awesome. 
Yeah, that will be awesome. Now, do you have to be a member of Patreon to uh, uh, be a part of this? So you don't have to be a member of Patreon. The um, I'm going to upload free content, but there also is stuff that you can unlock with a $3 a month uh, donation. And that would unlock all the podcasts. But I will definitely be putting in free free content, too, for you know, so everybody can participate. Okay, because I'm not a member of that, uh, so I, I would like to follow you as well. So I didn't know if I had to be a member or not. So, okay, good. Yeah, of Patreon, no. Just if you want, if you like the content that the person, you know, the artist or whoever is putting out, then they, you know, have different tiers that you can be involved with, just for a minimal amount of money. And you can stop it, you know, if it's not something that you you feel like you're getting a lot from, you can always stop it. But um, we're we're able to upload free content too, so everybody can be a part of it. Okay, awesome. Well, that, that's a good thing, and 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 I hate to hear that it's trickling down to us now, but we knew it was coming. You know, <laughs> that's why God tells yeah. us put on the armor of God, put on the armor of Christ. It, it, this is the spiritual battle. Um, if you're not recognizing this spiritual battle, if this is we do not battle the flesh, we battle principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's the person we are not battling. It is the spirit of Baal that we are battling, and and Baal is the ruler of this world, and we are in this world, but we are not to be of this world. So. We have got to call upon God because I believe this is where we're at. I mean, you know my program. I mean, you know what I've done for years. I talk about each week what's been going on and how it relates to the Scripture. And we can honestly say that that we are now stepping into the famine for the Word of God. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to fight back. Yep. Fight till the end. (laughs) <laughs> That's right, and and exactly because you know I was talking about these dead churches in the world today, and you know you were telling us last time you were on the program that you. That's one reason you went to California was to to bring the word of God in y'all's own way out to that area of California. How's that been uh, working out for you? It's great. The church is going great. Um, you know we're we're getting new people every week, and and like I mentioned last time, we really are. We're not a church that's looking to go find people that are already happy in their church or that have already have a relationship with Jesus. We're really looking for those people that have never set foot in a church, have been or had a terrible, terrible experience with the church. And and those are the people that we're reaching. So praise God, he's bringing the people to us. Um, that that we're actually looking for, and we're you know being able to transform people's lives through this, and it's 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 amazing. It's been great. Well, Amen. Well, tell people how they can get to it and where they can find it. Yes, it's East Town Church. Um, you can look it up on online at easttown dot church. Uh, it's in San Ramon, California, and we meet on Sundays at ten a.m. And we have a lot of cool stuff. We just had tacos last week, so nothing cool this week. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know many churches that do taco Sunday, but that would be us. <laughs> well, you're you're talking to somebody that didn't get in off the road till about ten o'clock last night. And as soon as I uh, uh, dropped my dirty clothes off here at the house, I went straight to Taco Bell. So <laughs> I can easily. Well, these are like street, you know, California street tacos, like the real deal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I hope it's not like the tacos down in Miami, Florida, because uh, that's that's going to be a story for another day. But uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm uh, I'm glad you had the tacos. Now, uh, you know, it also could be, and I'm just going to l- throw this out there, it could be in the profession that you were in uh, that's aiding in this because uh, they're trying to stamp out this CDC oil. They're trying to stamp out the healing properties in all of it, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah, the devil does not like me. I mean, my hands are in, you know, if it's not ministry, it's trying to help people get get off of pharmaceutical medications and onto, you know, the plant that was put here for us. And so, um, yeah, my, <laughs> I'm sure I'm under attack all the time. 
Oh, yeah. So it's everything that we're involved in, friends, that uh, right now this is coming against those who are standing in the steeple swinging the lanterns, okay? But there's going to come a point in our near future to where even you, the silent ones, are going to be labeled the same as those up swinging the lanterns. And what are you going to do? Because you're being told tonight it's happening, it's coming, and it's coming for you next. So are we just going to sit idly by and listen to the government and be like, yeah, okay, I won't preach the Word of God because you don't want me to. Well, that's not what God told us to do. He told us to be disciples of Christ, to go out, spread the gospel, and baptize those. And if if one path is blocked, you know, you open up and you find another one. But God will open that door for you. But you got to rely on Him, man. I mean, I cannot tell you how many obstacles that I have had to bob and weave around. You know, poor Stacy, we had her on the last program, and she was talking about how she's losing her family. And I didn't, I didn't know until this phone call, Stacy, that you had that they had basically split ties with you because when you left us last time you said it was kind of in limbo (laughs) yes yep it and it it's really unbelievable i mean i could go on for hours about that but um and, and it's sad so but again it's exactly where it said that we were going to be so it's happening um and i am i'm a nobody you know, and it's happening in my life, and I'm being silenced at every turn. And so, you know what that tells me? It tells me I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And so, therefore, I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to keep going. So, that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's right, because when you're over the target, you take you take the most fire. So That's right. You know, we must be over the target, and that's a good thing. Praise God. You know, that's something that you, that's right. that you give all praise to that to God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my name. You know, that's a, that's a blessing, Sister Stacy. I mean, I told you about my my cousin that that I still love to death, you know, bless her heart. Um but she just basically dropped the hammer on me, you know, but that's a blessing. It may not appear to you. And friends, when this starts happening to you, this is the attitude. See, this is the word of God that you need to know is that when these things happen, it's a blessing. Blessed are you when they when they persecute you. So, uh, But the churches are afraid. The churches are afraid to say that because they're going to lose their 501c3. They're going to <laughs> they, they've traded their 30 pieces of silver already for Christ. Don't you be the one yeah. to trade anything for Christ except the truth. Oh, no, uh, that came out wrong. <laughs> don't, don't trade anything. <laughs> Speak the truth. That's what I meant to say. So, well, Stacy, I tell you, man, it's good to hear from you. Uh, I enjoy following you. I love you. coming on here. I love your show. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I just It's the front porch. That's what it's all about. Now, I know that you're from Michigan. And I know they have front porches up there, but they don't have porches up there like they do down here. Because mm-hmm. down here, you just climb up on it, kick your shoes off, prop your feet up, and you're all family, you know? <laughs> That's right. Yep. Well, my whole family's from the South, so I, I know what a front porch, what a real front porch looks like. Oh, okay. And I can appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, they're finishing up some of the construction up on 75 now, so that's good. Good deal. <laughs> yeah, just in time for all the snow. That's, that's the way it goes. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to tell you something kind of funny real quick, not to change the subject, but talk about some, some, home, some homebrew things. Uh, I had to go up to uh, a place uh, right off of Van Dyke Road. You know where that's at? Uh, right where I grew up. Yes. Oh, okay. My parents still live there, off of Van Dyke. Okay. Well, I just uh, I just came off of 94 and went north on uh, Van Dyke, maybe about uh, a half a mile, and then turned off into one of those little uh, industrial parks there. Okay. And uh, I delivered there, and then I came back down Van Dyke, got on 94, and started heading west back out toward... Uh, now, 75 is still closed going south of there, so I was going to go on out to 275 and then come down. But uh, 
Do you, you you know what the terrain looks like just as you get on 94 right there at Van Dyke, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not a nice area, I know. <laughs> and uh, they had barrels lined up uh, right along the um, uh, get-on ramp. And so I'm easing down through the well. I mean, I'm doing the speed limit down through there. And this car comes flying down the ramp and was going to jump in front of me. And just as it got to the end of the ramp, its bumper caught one of those uh, orange construction barrels. Oh. And, it's, oh, no. and it started spinning it like a top, and it just spun right out in front of me. And there wasn't anything I could do. So I hit it, and it goes up under my truck and got caught on my steering oh. axle. And I'm dragging it down the road up under my truck. Now, oh, you know that terrain right there. There's, there's nowhere to just ease over on the shoulder. And so I, I wanted to stop as soon as I could because at some point it was going to come flying out of my underneath my truck into the on, on come, you know, into the lane beside me. So mm-hmm. uh, then I heard it cut loose from the steering axle and get caught up under my drive axle. And and I'm thinking, oh, it's fixing to come out. But luckily it was in the next mile. Uh, there was another get-on ramp. I can't remember the name of the road, but I was able to ease over on that get-on ramp and kind of get off on that shoulder and was able to climb up under my truck to pull it out and uh, was able to get back on the road. But the point is, you you know that area. You know that terrain. So I thought you would get a big old kick out of that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it can be a danger zone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sure could. Well, Sister Stacy, man, it's just been a pleasure having you. And um, I'm so Thank sorry you. that this is coming against you. But, friends, let this be a lesson. I mean, months ago, you know, we, we were reporting when it happened to Alex Jones, when now it's trickling down to the little guys. And the yep. question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to hunker down and be like, okay, well, this ain't my world. I'm just passing through. Because you've got a job to do. <laughs> Until Jesus gets here, you have a job to do. You have a load to haul, and you've got a message to bring. And it, 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 and if you allow this to stop you, slow you down, or you allow this to where you just give in, then, friends, we just read to you in Hosea what's coming. And it's coming to the, to the corrupt elite, and it's coming to you as well. If you do not, repent and call upon the name of Jesus. So, Stacy, whew, um. I'll I'll start spreading the message to where people can find you, and we'll get this back up and running for you. Yeah, I appreciate it, and I'll um, I'll definitely keep you updated as to what is uh, going on over here. And if I you know get it back up and running, I'll let you know. But uh, I'm gonna I'm not going down without a fight. I can tell you that much. All right. Well, do me a favor. Uh, you know, anytime you want to come on here and give us some updates or progress, let me know because I'll I'll make it happen. All right. I appreciate it. That's right. I'll make Thank it. Thank you so much. I'll make it rain over here on the front porch, girl. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, God bless, and uh, we will talk soon. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. Well, you uh, you enjoy your event tonight, and you be very careful. Is the sun still shining over there in California? It is. It's actually quite warm. It's about 88 degrees right now, and the sun is still shining. So we're kind of hot over here. But, again, helping people with their health, I can't, you know, can't complain with that. Amen. Well, you know, that's prophetic, Stacy. because friends, let, it's dark here in Nashville right now, but let this be a prophetic message. It may be dark some places, but the sun is still shining. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Love that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, girl, well, listen, I'll turn you loose, and I appreciate you calling in, and do keep us updated. Okay. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. And that was Sister Stacy here on the front porch, my friends. Okay, we're going to take us a quick break. And uh, now we're going to go over some of the things going on around the world. Uh, and uh, we, we covered a lot, I know, already. But uh, we're going to discuss this Kavanaugh. There's been some new information that's come out against his accuser. Uh, we're going to talk about this plane that was shot down that uh, Israel was blamed for, this Russian plane over in Syria. And uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to, co- before we do all that, when we come back from this break, 
we are going to be talking about this flame that has appeared in Arkansas. Are you familiar with it? Have you heard about it? Is God sending us a message? He told us there will be signs in the heaven, signs in the moon, stars, signs on the earth, nations in distress with perplexity. Better buckle up, friends. Train has left the station. We'll be right back right after this. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut. We may have some reckoning with God to do in the month of September. The Bible says there's four sins that God does not take lightly and the earth convulses every time we practice these sins. God pays close attention to idolatry. We are unbridled and unashamed and unafraid to put before this nation idols. They wouldn't put a picture of a cross up there, but they'll put a picture of a demon god up there, and we're flaunting it right under God's nose, and we're facing a Semita year, and unless we repent, I'm afraid judgment's at the door. The second sin that affects the land is homosexuality, fornication, immorality, and lesbianism. God said, do not defile yourselves in any of these ways. This is the Bible. You can either reject it or you can fear it. I fear it. Desecration usually takes place before judgment comes. The third sin is the shedding of innocent blood, which includes abortion and other things. In 1973, the Supreme Court legalized abortion, and since then over 57 million children have been aborted. Blood has a language all of its own. And when they take a baby and massacre that baby and flush it down the commode, that blood goes into the rivers, and that blood still has a voice, and God hears it. Fifty-seven million babies have been aborted, and the cup of God's wrath is filling up. The fourth sin is the sin of breaking covenant. There's a direct correlation in how God treats people who bless Israel or those who curse Israel. God has blessed America all through these years because all of our presidents have been friends of Israel and they have stood by our most faithful ally in the Middle East. So our current president, President Obama, has categorically pulled away from Israel and threatened to abandon her as future votes come up to the UN concerning Israel. This is a deliberate and a blatant covenant-breaking piece of legislation that may determine our future as a nation into a future that we don't want to think about. Don't think God can't get to the place that His wrath will not wait any longer. America's soul is hanging in the balance, and it possibly could be that these are the final waning hours of America. It could be that September is going to bring about such swift change and such swift judgment, I'm saying possibly, that these could be the final hours. To Iraq, to Iran, President Obama, to whoever will listen, you're not through with Jesus Christ. You're going to see him before too very long. You better make sure you're on the right side when you see him. Now, if you do not believe that judgment is coming, that God's Word is true, that we need to be patient, it's not only coming for the corrupt, it's coming for those who are afraid to stand on the Word of God, who maybe don't know because their church has been leading them astray. You're being told tonight, friends, when it rains, it rains on the just and the unjust. Okay? Think about that. God has been sending sign after sign after sign, year after year after year. And yeah, we've been called crazy. We've been called ridiculous. <laughs> we've lost family members just like Sister Stacy, man. But we're still out here plowing the field because we know the harvest is coming. 
and this is why we do what we do. In Arkansas, there has been a flame that has shot up out of the ground. Flame has shot up out of the ground. There will be signs on the earth. What does this mean? Check this out. The flames that shot up out of a hole in north, northern Arkansas rather remains a mystery at this point to experts and even county leaders. Caitlin Sinet has more on what they are ruling out as the cause. An unusual call for the Midway Volunteer Fire Department. A volleyball-sized hole with flames shooting out of it off Highway 5 South in Midway. Fire was burning roughly two feet in diameter, about eight feet tall, and it burned for approximately 40 minutes. The homeowner who lives nearby told us off camera he came outside Monday morning to flames shooting from the hole up to the man's nose on this billboard. Now county leaders are trying to figure out how the phenomenon started. We don't believe that the devil showed up or the meteorites landed or the big booms happened. So what did cause this hole and those flames? That's the burning question. We have contacted every utility company that's in the area and we know for a fact now that they have lost no service, they have nothing there, so there's nothing to do with the utilities, which would have been, a, which been our first inclination to believe it was something there. No one knows where the hole ends. A few geologists say they don't believe it was caused by a meteorite or lightning strike. And one with the Arkansas Geological Survey says how it started is a mystery. I can't uh, think of any geologic situation that allow that to happen. Not in this area. There's not any fossil fuels, coal, or natural gas or petroleum that occurs in the area. But he wants to dig for some possible answers. I imagine you would have to do some serious excavation to find out the source of that. We would be happy to go up there and look. I've already talked about going up there and looking at the area. There probably isn't a lot we can tell, but we you know, can get an idea of uh, just the general surroundings. The homeowner says he mowed the lawn recently and did not notice any kind of hole there before the fire. What ignited it and what fueled it, we still don't know, and it may remain forever a mystery. In Midway, I'm Caitlin Sinet. They have no idea what caused this to where it came from. Let's see what the Word of God tells us. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. The cankworm, the caterpillar, and the palm worm, my great army which I sent among you. Friends, at some point we are going to be restored. He is going to restore the years that the locusts have eaten. And ye shall eat plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dwelt that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. He says, my people, if you are not a child of God, you better start. You better get in that relationship, because he said, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and we will know that he is going to be in the midst of America. And that I am the Lord your God and no one else. And my people shall never be ashamed. But verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men see visions. And also upon the servant, upon the handmaiden. In those days I will pour out my spirit. He is going to pour out his spirit on all. What do you think this walk away movement is all about, where people are walking away from the Democrat Party because their their veil is being lifted and the God that they serve is being shown? Verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit. 30, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire. And pillars of smoke. What have, we, what have we been seeing coming out of California? I should have asked Sister Stacy how the wildfires were out there. I apologize for that, Sister Stacy. We'll, uh, we'll discuss that next time. But he is going to show blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 
Verse 32, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in the Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And the Lord hath said, And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Friends, listen to that one more time. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. If you do not call upon the name of the Lord, if you're relying upon these dead churches, thinking they're, 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 they're walking you through your, your plan of salvation, if, if they're going along with what the government is wanting them to go along with, because it's going to be uncovered, you're going to know it. You better be calling upon the name of the Lord now. There will be deliverance. The Lord has said this. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. If you are being called right now, I've been been I've been being called. Sister Stacy's been called. This is why we are the remnant. We see the sword coming. And we're telling you, as a watchman on the wall, there is a sword coming, not only for the corrupt. But for all of us, there is a sword coming, friends. But there's going to be signs of fire, plumes of smoke, fire (laughs) in the earth. What was this hole all about? God just told you. You don't think that, that, that demons exist? Hebrews chapter 1 talks about there will be people that will be doing illegal things and things against God, and there will be other people that agree with it. Demons are surfacing. Check this out. Florida sheriff is stepping in after a man bears it all, doing work around his house. Some of his neighbors have come to accept it, while others with young children are raising a flag. A man's naked behavior outside of his South Florida home, all caught on camera. He'll be out there working on his car, opens his garage door up, stands there, works on his car, old Camaro he's got in there. People who live in this Stewart neighborhood say the man will even do yard work completely exposed. Really, really weird. He's old enough to know that's not right. The Martin County Sheriff's Office has received multiple calls and says his actions are completely legal, just as long as he does not inappropriately touch himself or cross his property line. Everyone says that's just crazy. You know, it is. However, if it continues... Two different statutes have been met with that behavior. One being lewd and lascivious behavior. The other one being breach of the peace. Some of the man's neighbors are defending his nude antics. They're not taking it off their property. Mm-hmm. So I figure what they can do whatever they want to do on their on their land. Amy Canterbury is a mother of six. Her kid's bus stop is across the street from the man's home. She does not see a problem with him letting it all hang out. Literally, they're the nicest people you ever meet, and they would give you their clothes if they had them on to give it to you. Okay, so now we got people doing yard work, working on their cars naked, but yet there's people out there that agree with it. Well, that's that's okay. You know, they're at their house. They can do that. Now, let me touch on North Korea real quick. It's going to boggle your mind, but it's going to prove to you the lying fake news media. Listen. Okay, well, we know President Trump is going to denuclearize North Korea. We know they're already working with South Korea. We know that they're planning the Olympics together. We know that Kim Jong-un is shutting down plants. But these things take time. You can't just go in there and the next day it all be done. But Kim Jong-un is making effort and is doing steps to denuclearize North Korea. We've been told by Q <laughs> that the CIA ties have been cut. Listen, listen to how the lying mainstream media spins this. And at the beginning of the, of the clip, you know, they're going to be telling you the truth of what's going on, and then watch how they spin it. Watch how they spin it. Kim Jong-un pulled out all the stops to welcome South Korean President Moon Jae-in to North Korea with cheering crowds, an intimate lunch, and one of those famous, highly choreographed North Korean stadium shows. 
all for this. Today, both leaders promising to ease tensions, and Kim Jong Un promising to scale back his nuclear weapons program. To turn the Korean Peninsula into a land of peace without nuclear weapons and nuclear threats, Kim said. Kim agreeing to close his main missile testing facility, and saying he'll close his biggest nuclear complex if the U.S. takes corresponding measures. North and South Korea also agreed to create a no-fly zone on their border. Over those mountains there, you can see in North Korea there. Meaning U.S. Air Force flights like this one we recently joined are, in principle, now no longer allowed. Prior to becoming president, it looked like we were going to war with North Korea, and now we have uh, a lot of progress. But North Korea has so far done nothing to get rid of the nuclear bombs it already has. And U.S. intelligence officials have told NBC News they believe North Korea is still making nuclear weapons. Okay, see right there. Everything that Trump said is going to happen is happening, but boom, they had to spin it there to end. Now listen how they spin it, how they spun it. Lester, despite that, Kim is planning to go to Seoul soon, and North and South Korea even say they will make a joint bid for the Olympics. So he's getting a lot, and so far, still keeping his nuclear weapons. See there, and still keeping his nuclear weapons. They had to close it with that. Lies, friends. Lies from the pit of hell. Is Trump anointed? I don't know. But friends, <laughs> you've got to see how this, how this, what, what did it say? What did it say? What did it say? We're going to go back and we're going to read it again. Though his hatred covers itself with guile. What is guile? It's sly or cunning intelligence. Though his hatred covers itself with guile, his wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. Jeremiah sixteen seventeen, For my eyes are on all their ways. You hear that? God's eyes on, are on all of our ways. They are not hidden from my face nor is their iniquity concealed from my eyes. There is a judgment coming, friends. It is coming for the corrupt, but it is coming for us as well. We are still on the outer fringes of mercy and forgiveness and repentance. Repent and give your life to Jesus Christ. Pick up your sword, which is the word, and get to work. Because his eyes are on you. They are not hidden from my face. What you do is not hidden. Ezekiel 11, 5. Then the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me, and he said to me, Say, thus saith the Lord. So you think, house of Israel, for I know your thoughts. He knows our thoughts, people. Hosea chapter 7, verse 2. What did we just go over at the beginning of the show? The whole chapter of Hosea 7. And they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their deeds are all around them. They are before my face. In Amos chapter 5 verse 12, For I know your transgressions are many and your sins are great. You who distress the righteous and accept bribes and turn aside the poor in the gate. I'm going to pause for effect on that one. For I know your transgressions are many and your sins are great. You who distress the righteous and accept bribes. You who distress the righteous and accept bribes. These weak need churches, these 501c3 churches, you're accepting a bribe from the government to distress the righteous. And you turn aside the poor in the gate. You tell me why we have 300,000 homeless people and we have 300,000 churches. Tell me. 
there was a church down in North Carolina just not too long ago that was feeding the homeless, and guess what? The government said you can't feed the homeless anymore. So guess what the church did? They quit feeding the homeless. Is that what God commanded them to do? Stop feeding the homeless? Stop stop giving to the poor? No, but the government did. You serve who you fear. You serve who you fear. Okay, I've got uh, landslides in the Philippines. I have got uh, the storm that hit Europe. You can look into that. I won't play the clips. We're running out of time here. I will address, though, this plane. If you're unfamiliar of what happened, there was a plane, an Israeli air fighter jet, that was following a cargo Russian plane, okay? It was right behind the Russian plane. Now, this is just going to be my opinion on the reason behind this, but I'm going to tell you what happened. There was an Israeli plane flying over Syria right behind a Russian cargo plane that had 15 Russian soldiers in this cargo plane. <clears throat> And the air, the 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 the, the surface to air missiles in Syria was allegedly trying to shoot at the Israeli plane, but the missiles hit the Russian cargo plane carrying the fifteen Russian soldiers. So this plane that was shot down, where all fifteen were killed when the plane crashed into the Mediterranean Sea, this. The deep state immediately blamed it on Israel. At first, they blamed it on Israel for shooting down the plane. But then when the evidence came out that it was uh, the Syrian army that shot from the ground, then they blamed Israel that they were trying to shoot the Israeli plane down but hit the Russian plane. And then they tried to blame Israel for pushing this plane into the end of the missile fire. So the ones who fired the missiles weren't being blamed. Three different stories were made up to try and blame Israel. Let's listen to the report and then I will share my opinion. Amidst the confusion of Monday night's Israeli airstrikes inside Syria, there was an unforeseen consequence. Syria's air defense units, trying to hit Israeli F-16 fighter jets, instead hit a Russian electronic surveillance plane. The Il-20, like the one shown here, fell into the Mediterranean, killing all 15 Russian servicemen on board. Russia's defense ministry is furious, blaming Israel for what it is calling hostile actions. The Israeli pilots were using the Russian aircraft as a shield and pushed it into the line of fire of the Syrian defences. As a result, the aircraft, which has a much more effective reflecting surface than the Israeli jets, was brought down by the missile defence system. Israeli aviation management and the pilots of the F-16 jets must have seen the Russian aircraft as it was landing from the height of five kilometres. However, they have done a provocation deliberately. In Moscow, Israeli diplomats were summoned to the foreign ministry and Defence Minister Shoigu protested to his Israeli counterpart, Avigdor Lieberman, on the phone. But asked about the incident at a news conference with the Hungarian Prime Minister, Vladimir Putin took a softer line. In this case, of course, I would like to offer my deep condolences to the relatives of those who died. Speaking of your comparison to the case when a Turkish fighter jet downed our plane, this was a different situation. Then the Turkish jet deliberately downed our plane. In this case, on the other hand, it looks like a chain of tragic random events because an Israeli jet did not down ours. The difference in tone between the Russian Ministry of Defence and Vladimir Putin suggests that the Russian president is satisfied that the point has been made and that this chain of tragic circumstances, as he put it, shouldn't risk what has hitherto been a pretty good working relationship between Russia and Israel. Okay. Blame Israel, blame Israel, blame Israel, blame Israel. 
How do you push a plane? How do, how, how are you going to, why are you going to use a plane as a shield? Uh, there's only one shield over the nation of Israel and their, their, their army, and that is the hand of God. Could, and I'm just asking a question, my opinion. We know how bad the deep state wants to kick off some sort of conflict between Russia and Israel and us and Syria to ward off the judgment that God is bestowing upon them. Now, if we have not covered in this two hours the point that God's judgment is moving swiftly, then I have not done my job correctly. These are the days that we're in, friends. We're in the steeple, swinging the lantern. Let's bow our heads and let Mike lead us in the closing prayer. When I come back, show be yours. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this joining tonight. Lord, we ask for your truth to, in, to be with all of us. Lord, enrich our spirits in truth, that we may commune to you in truth. Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you lift those hearts that are burdened and will be burdened through this time that we are entering. Lord Jesus, keep us focused on you and open our spiritual eyes. Pour out wisdom upon us that we may walk and do your ways with the knowledge you have given us. Lord, I ask a special blessing over those who labor for the word. And I ask an even higher blessing for those who listen to the word, Father, and do attempt to comprehend what you're saying. Touch them, Lord, in their lives and their households. Put your hand of protection and assign additional angels if necessary, Lord, but keep them. Keep all of us. Lord, right now we confess so that we are not hindered in this prayer. We confess any sinful thing we've ever done and ask forgiveness. We release Anybody who has ever wronged us in the past, we release them in the name of Jesus from our hearts. Lord, help us in the releasing of those things that are difficult to release. Help us in doing that, Lord, that we may go forward with a clear conscience, obeying your word. Having released everyone, Father, release your blessings to us. Having forgiven everyone in our past, Father, forgive us of our sins. These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, we're going to the lion's den. We're going into the fiery furnace. You just you just better <laughs> you better grasp that concept right now. Are you going to be devoured by the lions? Are you going to be burned by the flame? Or are you going to allow God to deliver you while you're in these situations? The only way to deliver is to repent. Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're in the time of grace. We're still in the time of mercy, friends. The sword is coming. The sword is coming. Call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Can't stress that enough. It's your choice. You can be ate by the lion or you can be delivered while you're there. Till next time, I am Old Smokehouse. And we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Smokehouse. To talk to Smokehouse, dial 641-552-9354. That number once again, 641-552-9354. And enter access code 252-380, followed by the pound sign. Call in and join the show. Smokehousestudios.net God is among us. The door to the ark is slamming shut.